All right, the other big story of the day. It's been a month since the horrific attack on a 23-year-old girl in Delhi who was gang-raped. And Sunetra Chaudhary now joins us uh, for the very latest. Sunetra, take us through all that has happened in the last one month, the movement, the legal aspect of it, and, of course, the role of the police. Here I am at Jantar Mantar. It's been, of course, it's the place where all protests are held in Delhi. And since the last month, ever since that brutal gang rape and the murder of the 23-year-old, uh, since then, this place has lots of shrines really dedicated to her. If I can just show you behind me, there are lots of these, you know, of course, the posters and all. One of the shrines that is over here, and a lot of the people, there are some people here who come here every day since then. And they come over here and protest and all they want they say is speedy justice and if you see if you see just behind me as well the barricades behind actually mark the police force the police doesn't want to take any chances after all after the 16 the process protests that emerged from there saw a lot of people come out a lot of people who haven't been involved in protests in the capital before all of them come out on the streets which did in a way government still kind of reading from that not knowing uh, how to respond to those kind of feelings within the government within the public of you know there was a lot of anger there was a lot of resentment and we saw those protests which in fact claimed the life of a policeman as well uh, constable tomar in that entire incident so it has been a long traumatic month and of course the government has promised a lot of things but NETV Sorma Biswas now takes you through where the legal case stands. A day-to-day -day hearing has been planned. That hasn't started exactly yet. Of course, the case has to start. The day-to-day -day hearing have started. But there's a lot of debate about juvenile justice. Should the age be reduced or not? Sorma Biswas tells you where the case actually stands now. Media spotlight on a school principal from Uttar Pradesh whose word could decide the fate of one of the most savage attackers in the Delhi gang rape. A 17-year-old likely to get away with just three years in jail if he's convicted, only because he was a minor at the time of the incident. The Juvenile Justice Board is still checking a school certificate which says the accused was 17 years, 6 months and 11 days old at the time when the crime happened. Police sources say the school went by the age given by the juvenile's parents during the time of admission and never checked any birth certificate. If the principal statement fails to settle the age, the police can conduct an ossification or bone marrow test. Delhi police is waiting for the Juvenile Justice Board to come to a decision on the age of the sixth accused. If he turns out to be an adult, then they will file a supplementary charge sheet. But if they conclude that he is a minor, then they will file an inquiry report in front of the board detailing his role in the brutal attack. It's exactly one month since the horrific attack on a 23-year-old girl who, along with her friend, took a private bus from this bus stand at Munirka in South Delhi at 9.30 in the night. For 40 minutes, they were beaten. The girl was gang-raped by six men and her intestines pulled out in an act of unspeakable brutality. The men threw the couple off the bus at this spot, even trying to run over the girl before speeding off. After a brave 13-day battle against all odds, the girl died, leaving an entire nation angry and screaming for justice. Under immense pressure, the police managed to catch all the accused within a week. Based on physical evidence and 40 witnesses, a charge sheet was filed within a record time of 18 days. In the 650-page charge sheet, the police claimed that Ram Singh, the bus driver known by friends and neighbours as Mental, was the main accused. Uh, इस कपल को आवाज देकर बुलाया कि उसकी बस दौरका जा रही है तो ये कपल उसमें चढ़ गए ये सोचकर कि शायद ये पब्लिक कैरेज वे है। But no one could have imagined the way the story affected millions, bringing people out on the streets, not only in India but across the world. On 2nd of January, a special fast-track court was inaugurated in this court complex to hear the Delhi gang rape case on a day-to-day -day basis. But even after two weeks since the inauguration, the case has not been referred to the fast-track court yet. The country is watching the judiciary as they expect not just speedy trial,
but also exemplary punishment for all those convicted of this crime. With camera person Sudhir in New Delhi, Tonima Biswas for NDTV. So Tonima Biswas there reporting on what's happening to the case legally. The police, of course, managing to file that charge sheet in 18 days. But what a lot of the women in the city and across the country are saying is that we face sexual harassment on a daily basis. So shouldn't this case be a wake-up call for others? What is the kind of positive that can come out of it? Shouldn't the government do something more to ensure the security and perhaps do something to prevent uh, anything, these kind of incidents from happening again? The government, because of the kind of pressure, because of the kind of protests they've seen, has tried to initiate certain things. For instance, one of them being the helpline, 181, a special helpline that the Delhi government, the Delhi police says, will look at sexual harassment just by itself. And so that has started since that incident. But is it working? Ket Ki Angre does some stock taking. मैम अगर आप का पीछा कर रहे हैं तो आप पीछे की तरफ भागना शुरू कर दें जहां पे खूब सारी पब्लिक है ठीक है मैम a distress call from a woman in the capital at the delhi government's newly launched women's helpline in just a fortnight some encouraging changes already visible at the 181 control room मैम आप बिल्कुल डरिए नहीं घबराइए नहीं मैं अभी पुलिस को कॉल करके सौ नंबर पे मैं वहां पे पुलिस को भेजती हूं when any tv did a reality check a day after its launch there was an all-male staff with two telephone lines for receiving calls. Now there's an all-woman team that mans the control room 24-7 in shifts. There are three phones for receiving calls and a floor manager who is responsible for forwarding the same to either the Delhi Police or the Delhi Commission for Women. These all women are either survivor of violence themselves and they have been five to ten years into uh, women's rights movement and they have been into issues of uh, handling casework. Uh, especially my supervisors, they are uh, senior uh, legal consultants, they are paralegal trained. Delhi government really doesn't have the police under it. These calls are forwarded either to the Delhi police or the Delhi Commission for Women. So in that sense, it is a forwarding agency at the moment, the helpline. With the deployment of the trained uh, women staff, uh, there is a gradual change and at, as on today, we are able to uh, uh, respond to at least more than 70% calls. The maximum traffic of distress calls comes in late evening between 8 p.m. and midnight with complaints of stalking topping the list. Offensive calls and text messages come in next. And though the helpline has largely shared its teething trouble, the challenge is to ensure that it can effectively forward not just the calls that come in, but even follow up with police and its agencies to make sure that complaints are also addressed. In New Delhi, Ket Ki Angre for NDTV. I think the conditions just become worse because parents don't feel safe to let us out. And people outside are really scared. They don't know what to do. There's a lot of protests. But then again, you do feel safe to some extent because everyone's aware and you know what to do. I don't think the awareness has really changed because I think India is still an unsafe place for women and it's up to us to protect, protect ourselves. I, no, I just think that we're more aware of the crimes now. It's always been there but after that incident I think we're more aware and I, I hope people will do something about it. I feel it's lost its impact over the months because um, initially it was, it was, there was a lot of protest and everything and there were banners put up but after that we don't see very much. In fact the bands that was uh, uh, meant, to, meant, to start, meant to be on a particular day and they said everything's going to be shut but even that didn't seem to make a difference and everything was happening just as normal so uh, I think it, you know, it's gradually losing its impact like, like all other big crimes that happen and eventually die down.